I'm not sure how this customer managed to do this to their phone, but there's the logic board snapped in two pieces. We're going to do a board swap, transferring the CPU, the RAM, and the UFS to a known good donor. We can start this process by just removing the underfill around these chips. And then we'll use our hot air station to preheat the board and then focus heat straight down without using the microscope onto these chips so we can remove them as quickly and safely as possible. I apologize, I don't have a good camera angle for this. I'll make a future video that better conveys how to perform this process of removing these ch chips. We have to be very careful, these chips are very delicate. Once all three chips are removed, we can put the customer board aside as it's scrap, we don't need it anymore. And we'll put the CPU into this fixture so we can clean it up. It's full of uh, underfill and factory solder, so we'll apply low melt solder to our iron and use flux and then copper wick to flatten each of the pads. Keep in mind there's still a lot of glue left over, so we have to repeat this process two to three times. We'll also get our hot air at 230 degrees Celsius and tweezers to remove some of the residual glue left on the chip. You can see here we're doing our second pass of low melt solder onto the CPU side and copper wick. What we're left with now are some oxidized pads. So a safer method to dealing with these oxidized pads is to use a number 11 blade and expose each of them like, like so. If we don't do this, when we uh, do the reballing, the solder might not catch these pads. So we'll just go through and expose each of them. We have to be very, very careful here. We don't want to go too deep or oh, scrape the paint. Then we'll do one final pass with our low melt solder and copper wick. So CPU side is good to go. We flip it over and this is where we have all the bonding pads that will connect to the RAM. So same process here. Low melt solder, flux, copper wick. It's easier to deal with this side of the chip. We don't usually get any oxidized pads. It's mostly just on the CPU side that connects to the board. So onto the RAM IC. This is the only chip of the three that is replaceable. It doesn't store any information. It's a, it's a RAM chip. This connects directly to the top of CPU. So it's stacked on top. Same process here with the low melt solder flux and copper wick to flatten each of the bonding pads. We'll do one more pass to deal with the oxidized pads. But before we do that, we'll use the hot air and tweezers to remove the extra glue. Be very careful when applying the solder. We're actually using a large blob on the end of the iron and trying not to touch the iron itself to any of the pads. We're trying to just let the solder um, catch the pads from the blob at the end of the iron. Onto the third chip, this is the UFS. 
that houses all the customer's information, which is what we are after. Think of the CPU as a key to accessing this chip. It is encrypted by the CPU, and without a functional CPU, the original CPU, there is no way to access the information on this chip. Once again, the same process. Looks like we can get this one done with two passes of low melt solder, flux, and copper wick. And with that being said, all three of these chips are just about ready for reballing. Onto the reballing process. Make sure there are no foreign objects in the stencil or on the CPU. Line it up perfectly. And we'll hold it down in place with our left hand. And then grab 183 solder paste and plant evenly. And then we can wipe away all the excess paste. And now we will transfer from holding it with our left hand to our right hand with these tweezers. And then using heat, parameters set at 300 degrees Celsius and 40 airflow, we will reball the chip. We have, looks like one pad didn't go into place, so we'll drop a little bit of flux and give it uh, a push with some heat. And looks good. Maybe not. Let's give it a little more. There we go. CPU is ready for installation. After, we give it one more blast of heat. Reset each point. Perfect. Onto the RAM IC. Same process here. So the trick is to preheat like this the entire area as soon as you kind of see uh, the solder liquefying you just focus in like that in one of the corners and very quickly are able to reball each point. And the reset, I don't know if you can tell but when we do the reset, each of the points shift perfectly into place. Onto the final chip, the UFS memory. Following this completion of the UFS chip reball, we have all three chips ready for installation onto a donor board. So here is our donor board. This board is already prepped. It has the chips removed. So we'll add flux.
and place the chip. Make sure that there are no foreign objects between the chip and the board. And then we'll line it up. These Samsung boards are nice because they have little markers in the corner that help us to line up the chip. Preheat. And then focus to install the chip. Parameters are at 330 degrees Celsius and 40 airflow for installation. That visual cue of the flux coming from beneath the chip indicates that it is uh, installing. Next we'll put flux on top of the CPU and install the RAM on top. And the UFS chip. Line it up perfectly. Preheat and then focus. All three chips are installed onto the known good donor board, so it is time to test the phone. We put the board into the housing and prompt to boot. We have the Samsung logo and it boots directly into the operating system. This was a successful data recovery job.